Here I'll show you how to create a uh, dynamic VLOOKUP formula where the data table is going to update each time you add something to it. So basically the table array argument within the VLOOKUP function is going to update. So for instance what I have here is an employee list that is searchable by ID number and I've got the data table right here just so it's easier to see and understand. So if I type in say 1107 enter all my VLOOKUP formulas here populate last name, first name, job, email, phone number, etc. Now the problem comes when I add employees down here. So if I add another employee here and type in the ID number, the VLOOKUPs aren't going to find it because the uh, lookup array is a static cell reference. So it only references these cells. It's not going to get bigger or smaller if I add or subtract names. So let's go ahead and fix that right now. First, I'm going to add another employee, Mike Jester in accounting. And just to give you an example, when I enter the ID number 2222, I get NAs for all my VLOOKUPs. Now the functions we're going to be using are the offset and the count A. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up and zoom in a little bit. Now if you're viewing this, you should be familiar with uh, VLOOKUP. Otherwise, it will get uh, confusing, to say the least. So I've got my VLOOKUP formula here with the lookup value, table array, column number, and range lookup. Now, the only thing we need to change is the table array, because that's what we need to make dynamic. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that. And now we're going to enter the function offset. So O-F-F-S-E-T, offset, open parentheses. Now for the offset, the first argument is the reference. And the reference is going to be the upper leftmost cell of your table. So basically whatever you selected um, for your VLOOKUP table. For me that will be the first ID number. Now you're going to do comma, zero, comma, zero. Now these two zeros refer to rows and columns. So the first zero is for a row, the second one's for a column. And were you to put a number in here, what that would tell offset is to move your reference cell right here one to the right, up, down, left, or up two, left one. So that only refers to moving the reference cell, and that's why it's going to be zero. Now let's add another comma. Here's an important thing. We're going to do the height. So this is what makes it dynamic. And to fi figure out the height of our table, we want to use the count A function. And the count A is going to count any non-empty cell. So C-O-U-N-T-A open parentheses. Now what we're going to do here is select the entire B column. So the entire column where the reference cell is. And if you have a previous version of Excel, you may not be able to select the entire column. You may have to do say B1 to B500 or something like that. Now let's go ahead and close the count A function. Now here's an important part. Count A is going to count every single cell that has text or numbers in it and it's going to add that to how big your table is. But the problem is our table starts at our reference cell and we're counting the entire column. So it's going to count this ID number here, this number here, and the ID number here. It's going to count three extra cells. And in case you're wondering, employee lookup is actually in cell A1 and not B1. So that poses a problem because when it counts the three extra cells, it's going to add three extra spaces to the bottom of our table where we have nothing. So to get rid of that, simply minus 3 at the end of the count A function. Now, if you had no cells above your reference cells that had text or data or numbers or anything in it, you would not have to do this. It's only because I have stuff above the reference cell. That's the only reason why I have to do this. So if I had 4 cells, I have to do minus 4. Now the next thing, comma, since it's a table, we have to figure out the width of the table also. So we're going to use another count a function. 
So C-O-U-N-T-A, open parentheses. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and select the entire row 7, which is the very top row. And close those parentheses. Now, once again, if I was in a previous version of Excel, I may have to only select a range. So say A7 to Z7 or something like that. But we don't really expect the table to expand um, into different columns, only extra rows. And now notice here, I do not have to do a minus anything because there's nothing to the left of the number. So the count A function will not count this cell. Now let's add one more in parentheses for the offset and hit enter. So now let's try it out. Remember we added one extra thing a second ago, Mike Jester, ID number 2222. So 2222, enter. Now the last name cell where we updated the VLOOKUP has his last name Jester, but none of the other VLOOKUP cells got him in there because they aren't dynamic. Now I'm not going to go through doing it for each one. It's exactly the same way to do that. And I'm going to show you the formula right here. And so you can see regular VLOOKUP except for the offset function right there. So all you have to do to update all of the other VLOOKUPs and any other VLOOKUP you have is to create an offset function just like that. Now this is pretty confusing, um, so if you've never done it before, it may be actually just easier for you to download the spreadsheet and uh, copy this VLOOKUP formula here and use it for your own purposes. But that's how you can make a VLOOKUP formula that dynamically updates when its data table uh, gets bigger.